Good morning. Hey, can humans overrule God's management of his creation? Our reading today is at Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 19 through 22. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant, so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister to me. God has a covenant with the day and with the night, and that's, that's the way that Jeremiah puts it here. Jeremiah says to us, if we can cause those covenants to be broken, then we can cause God's covenants with David to be broken. Can we also cause to be broken the covenant that God has with the house of Judah? Remember, Jesus is later a descendant of David and will sit on his throne as priest and king forever. The Levites, the servants of God, God always has servants. Today, his church, in his church, he has people, people to serve him. He wants all Christians to serve him. Through Jesus, the son of David, going down a few generations, that's Jesus, he is the king on the throne. He is prophet, priest, and, yes, king. There is a king on the throne of David, and that is Jesus. He is our king. Today, you know, we think, well, we're, we live under some kind of a, a re democratic republic or some other kind of a nation you might live in. We're, we're Christians. We're under a monarchy, if you don't mind. Yes, and Jesus is our king. We forget that somehow. But this prophecy is true, and God has not failed. This prophecy hasn't failed Friend, through the prophecy of Jeremiah, God is still speaking to us. Jesus came then. He successfully lived without sinning. He was triumphant over death in the grave and rose again. He is our king today. Why is that so hard for us to, to think of it that way? God has never relented in his purposes for you and me. His plan is to help us, to save us. He gave us free will so that we could turn to him and choose Jesus. This prophecy shows that he is very confident that he will deliver to us the things that we need spiritually. He's telling us that it's not going to fail. And, you know, we, we can't break the day and the night. We can't break that. People think somehow we can break the planet, but I think somebody's got too big of an idea about how much humans impact things. God is on his throne. Let's live responsibly, of course. But we can't break the covenant with the day and the night. God is trying to encourage his people with how strongly and how determined he is to be faithful to you and I. We can be sure of God's continued determination to save as many as possible. And on that thought, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, your love for us is sure. It's very clear from this passage you want to encourage your people, especially the people in Jeremiah's day who were scattered and the future looked totally hopeless. Lord, you were still giving them hope. And although things might not be quite so bad today for us, we are in, in a totally unparalleled case. We've never had this case, any of us, in our lives. Help us to trust in you. You have good thoughts for us. You have good plans for us. We want to be right. Bless and help us as your people, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer. Help us to be right. And we ask for you to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. God is pleased to provide salvation for us. Are you willing to receive it? God be with you today.